good evening and welcome to TC Network. I am Dignay Tim Hokip bringing you today's news. Today's top headlines include Helicopter destroyed 10 of Kukizo. Scuffle broke out at the Monapai. Associations under Mizoram University condemns a research scholar over collecting and handling funds to Arambai Tengol. News in details. A solo flight of a helicopter destroyed 10 of Kukizo, who are guarding the village today at key location point KLP in Mori Town, leaving many women and children injured. The incident happened at around 9 in the morning when a helicopter that flew too close to the ground destroyed 10 and shelter house of Kukizo women folk, blew away footsteps and many other things, including injury of couple of women and children at the spot. Many are in the apprehension as to why the helicopter could fly too close to the crowded place like key location point in Moray Town, where women folk of Kukizo are keeping guard. As reported from the spot, there was also a heavy scuffle broke out at the Monopai at the same time. It is believed that this unfortunate incident happened on account of lack of communication between women folk and leaders of the town. In spite of different difficulties, the women from in key location points said they will continue to hold the place and not give up, said a woman who was present in the spot. The state as well as the central government are continuous are continuing to torture Cookie Zo and as such this harassment should be stopped at once, said the woman protester. She asks every single organization in the town, such as the Cookie in Peting Nopal, Village Volunteers, etc need to come together and coordinate in everything we do, added the women protester. Different associations under Mizoram University have issued joint statements in condemnation of research scholars from the university being involved in collecting and handing over funds to the Arambai Tengol. In a joint statement issued on Tuesday, Mizoram University Students Council, Mizoram University Research Scholars Association, Mizoram University Alumni Association, Mizoram University Teachers Association, Mizoram University Non-Teaching Employees Association, stated that they condemn an an ethical act by a student of a higher educational institution that may instigate unwanted communal tension inside the university campus and call that such unwanted incidents do not reoccur. The joint body stated that they have taken steps to maintain peace and harmony among the different communities and ethnic groups in Mizoram University since the beginning of violence inside May Manipur University campus on May 3, 2023 by issuing a joint press statement on May 4, 2023 and organizing a peace gathering on July 27, 2023 inside Mizoram University campus. However, despite our best efforts, we are deeply aggrieved to learn that Ms. Teresa Ning Tauzam, PhD Scholar Department of HAMP, Mizoram University, was seen involved in giving donations to the Arambai Tengol on social media, thereby threatening the peaceful coexistence of different tribal ethnic groups inside Mizoram University campus, the joint body stated. The joint body stated that they will strive to continue to ensure peace in Mizoram University campus and also appeal that it also prevails in all educational institutions across the nation. The Deputy Commissioner in Fall East has issued an order informing to the general public that unauthorized blocking of national highways, state highways and other district roads for any purpose causing grave inconvenience to the general public as well as the vehicles flying on these roads are punishable offence under Section 8B of the National Highways Act 1956 read with Section 283 of IPC and Section 133 of CRPC 1973. In the order issued on Tuesday, the Deputy Commissioner Human Team Dina Devi informed all concerned to refrain from indulging in any such acts, failing which they shall be liable to be punished under Section 8B of the National Highway Act 1956, read with Section 283 of IPC and Section 133 of CRPC 1973. 
It may be mentioned that the order comes amidst the rising number of donations imposed by people in the valley along the highways and as well as to the business establishment in the valley. Recently, a video has also surfaced in social media wherein a non-local could be seen confronting a group of Mayday women who came to collect donations in the soul. In the video, the non-local lady told the Mayday women group that she has been disturbed and affected by many donations recently. In another video, a Mayday woman was also seen asking monetary donations to a Naga man traveling in four-wheeler wherein the women imposed a sum of rupees 50 as minimum donation. Security forces arrested at least three suspected active members of proscribed KCP Noyan from different places. The arrested members were identified as MD Imtiyas Khan, Elias Angoba, 21 from Kairang Mayai Lekai in Falis, Tokchom Romesh Chandra Singh, Elias Ayangba, 33 from Pubala Awang Lekai, and MD Salim, 30 from Kairang Mamang Lekai in Infal East District. As far in post, the arrest was made in connection with their involvement in extortion activities, targeting various establishments, shops, pharmacies, go-downs, oil pumps, etc. A case has been registered at Heingang Police Station for thorough investigation and the identification of their associates. Taking to ex Chief Minister Enviran Singh wrote, a combined team of security forces arrested MD Imdiyas Khan, an active member of the outfit KCP Noyan, along with his associates Tokchom Ramesh Chandra Singh and MD Salim. The arrest was made in connection with their involvement in extortion activities targeting various establishments, shops, pharmacies, go-downs, oil pumps, etc. These individuals are associated with the outfit KCP Noyan and TH Ramesh Chandra, the key figure, has been active since 2007 holding rank SS Surgeon. Meanwhile, a joint security team also arrested a proscribed member of Revolutionary People's Front RPF People's Liberation Army PLA, namely Ahaibam Amorjit Singh, 50 from Kongba Hestri Lekai, during mobile frisking and checking at Mantripukri Bazaar in Fall East on Friday. He was reportedly involved in extorting money from three wheeler plying along National Highway 1, said the North East Live. The Zilyongrong Students' Union Manipur, ZSUM, met a press statement on the 30th of January expressing their anguish over the kidnapping and terrifying heinous act done towards two Zilyongrong's men by suspected Arambai Tingles. The press statement reads, The Zilyongrong Students' Union Manipur, ZSUM, deeply anguished by the terrifying, brutal and heinous incident that two of our Zilyongrong Naga brothers, namely Gyang Zilung Rongmei, son of Barok Chao Rongmei from Khopum Satudai, Noni District, and Ziang, Zian Guanglung Malangmei, son of Poguilung Malangmei from Bityang Village, Lapok Noni District, were kidnapped and taken hostage at gunpoint and fired few rounds by the suspected Arambai Tingol at Ngakalawi Oil Pump Moirang yesterday at 5 p.m., dated 29 January 2024. They were threatening to kill them and all the valuable belongings or possession of hostages, which is estimated 2 lakhs were seized including 21,000 in cash by abductors. They were illegally beaten black and blue which led to immediate medical attention. The press release further reads, The JET SUM condemned in the strongest term and we are not able to tolerate such acts therefore. Any unwanted circumstances happen related to this issue is out of our organization. We have made several appeals to the government and concerned authorities to investigate the matter, but there is no positive response. The situation compels us to take up necessary steps to encounter adversaries to safeguard our integrity, rights, and freedom. We are running out of words to show our discontent, therefore, we have no option left to subside and remain silent. While the lawlessness of the state Manipur could lead to further division of the communities in Manipur, the press statement continues to read, The government of Manipur requires reassurance of the people of their safety and security on urgent basis. We also strongly call upon the government to take up necessary measures to contain the infectious ethnic violence. 
The increase of unchecked armed activism in the state is alarming and letting their free operation in the state cause insecurity of the public. The government of Manipur should take an accountability related to this incident and must compensate victim, victims for the loss as an indemnity. The Zelenrong Students' Union Manipur appeals to all the Naga civil organizations and concerned Naga's people to stand up and against the said incident, showing our unity, solidarity and strength. The budget session of Parliament began today with President Draupadi Murmu addressing a joint sitting of the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The budget session will be the last parliamentary session before the Lok Sabha polls are held later this year. Finance Minister Neil Malasitharaman will present the interim budget on February 1. The new government will present the full budget after it assumes office. The budget session is scheduled to end on February 9. Discussion on the motion of thanks on President Draupadi Murmu's address will begin in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha from February 2. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will reply to the discussion in the Rajya Sabha at 2 p.m. on February 7. Three new members, Satnam Singh Sandhu, Narayan Das Gupta and Swati Maliwal on Wednesday took oath as Rajya Sabha MPs. Chairman Zagdit Dhankar welcomed the new members after the, the oath taking. While Sandhu, the Chandigarh University founder, Chancellor, is a nominated member, Gupta and Maliwal were nominated by the AAP and elected unopposed from Delhi. In her address to a joint sitting in Parliament, President Draupadi Murmu said, Inflation in the country was kept under control despite the COVID-19 pandemic and two major wars, the Ukraine-Russia war and the Israel-Hamas war. In the past years, the war witnessed two major wars and faced a pandemic like COVID-19. Despite such global crisis, my government kept inflation under control in the country and did not let the burden on common Indians increase, she said. President Draupadi Murmu on Wednesday said, The centuries-old desire of a Ram temple in Ayodhya became a reality amid loud cheers from BJP members in the house. She said the more that she said that more than 13 lakh devotees visited the Ram Temple after the Pram Prati Sabha of the Ram Lala idol was conducted on January 22. Just hours after militants of Hamas stormed across the border between the Israel and Gaza and massacred around 1,200 Israelis, Israeli war plans began bombing campaigning that laid ways to enter cities and prompted charges of collective punishment. That was on October 7, 2023. Sixteen weeks later, the Israeli government released an intelligence design that said 13 employees of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, the largest humanitarian relief body in Gaza, had been involved in the attack to help in kidnapping some of the 250 people abducted that day. UNRWA chief Philip Lazzarini said that those accused of complicity had been fired while the UN's Office of Internal Oversight launched an investigation. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said anyone complicit in the October 7 massacre could be held accountable, including through criminal prosecution. But even before the investigation was launched, a string of countries announced they were suspending millions of dollars in funding for the agency, which is the main provider of food and shelter for more than 2 million people in Gaza. Israel wars against Hamas has driven Gaza into a humanitarian catastrophe. The cuts will make conditions even worse. Among the first countries to announce the suspension of it was the United States, UNRWA, biggest donor, Switzerland and Australia. In 2022, the US donated $344 million, followed by Germany with $202 million. The crisis triggered by the Israeli allegations comes at a desperate time for Gaza where more than 26,000 people have been killed, mostly women and children, and many of the 1.9 million who have been displaced are on the edge of starvation, according to the War Food Program. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.